Alois Alzheimer, Aloysius Alzheimer, also known as Alois Alzheimer, June 14, 1864, December 19, 1915, was a German psychiatrist and neuropathologist and a colleague of Emil Kreppelin. Alzheimer is credited with identifying the first published case of presenile dementia, which Kreppelin would later identify as Alzheimer's disease. Aloysius Alzheimer was born in Markbright, Bavaria on June 14, 1864. His father served in the office of notary public in the family's hometown. The Alzheimer's moved when Alois was still young in order to give their children an opportunity to attend the Royal Humanistic Gymnasium. Later, Alois studied medicine at Aschaffenburg and at the universities of Tübingen, Berlin, and Würzburg. In his final year of school he was on the fencing team and a member of a fraternity, and even received a fine for disturbing the peace while out with his team. In 1887, Alois Alzheimer graduated from Würzburg with a degree in medicine. The following year, he spent five months assisting mentally ill women before he took an office in the city mental asylum in Frankfurt am Main, the Stadtische Anstalt für und Epileptische, Asylum for Lunatics and Epileptics, a noted psychiatrist, was the dean of the asylum. Another neurologist, Franz Nissl, began to work in the same asylum with Alzheimer. Together, they conducted research on the pathology of the nervous system, specifically the normal and pathological anatomy of the cerebral cortex. Alzheimer was a co-founder and co-publisher of the journal Zeitschrift für die Gesamte Neurology und Psychiatry, though he never wrote a book that he could call his own. While at the Frankfurt Asylum, Alzheimer also met Emil Kreppelin, one of the best-known German psychiatrists of the time. Kreppelin became a mentor to Alzheimer, and the two worked very closely for the next several years. When Kreppelin moved to Munich to work at the Royal Psychiatric Hospital in 1903, he invited Alzheimer to join him. At the time, Kreppelin was doing clinical research on psychosis in senile patients. Alzheimer, on the other hand, was more interested in the lab work of senile illnesses. The two men would face many challenges involving the politics of the psychiatric community. For example, both formal and informal arrangements would be made among psychiatrists at asylums and universities to receive cadavers. In 1908 he was a professor at the Ludwig Maximilian University in the Neurological and Psychiatric Clinic of the Weak Friedrich Wilhelm University from 1912 until he fell ill. In 1901, Alzheimer observed a patient at the Frankfurt Asylum named August Ditter. The 51-year-old patient had strange behavioral symptoms, including a loss of short-term memory. She became his obsession over the coming years. Auguste Ter was a victim of the politics of the time in the psychiatric community. The Frankfurt Asylum was too expensive for her husband. Herr de Ter made several requests to have his wife move to a less expensive facility, but Alzheimer intervened in these requests. Ms. De Ter remained at the Frankfurt Asylum, where Alzheimer had made a deal to receive her records and brain upon her death. On April 8, 1906, Frau de Ter died and Alzheimer had her medical records and brain brought to Munich where he was working in Kreppelin's laboratory. With two Italian physicians, he used the staining techniques of Bielschowski to identify amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles. These brain anomalies would become identifiers of what later became known as Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer discussed his findings on the brain pathology and symptoms of presenile dementia publicly on 3 November 1906 at the Tübingen meeting of the Southwest German psychiatrists. The attendees at this lecture seemed uninterested in what he had to say. The lecturer that followed Alzheimer was to speak on the topic of compulsive masturbation, which the audience was so eagerly awaiting that they sent Alzheimer away without any questions or comments in his discovery of the pathology of a type of senile dementia. Following the lecture, Alzheimer published a short paper summarizing his lecture. In 1907 he wrote a larger paper detailing the disease and his findings. The disease would not become known as Alzheimer's disease until 1910, when Kreppelin named it so in the chapter on presenile and senile dementia in the 8th edition of his Handbook of Psychiatry. By 1911, his description of the disease was being used by European physicians to diagnose patients in the U.S. American Solomon Carter Fuller gave a report similar to that of Alzheimer at a lecture five months before Alzheimer. Oscar Fischer was a fellow German psychiatrist, 12 years Alzheimer's junior, who reported 12 cases of senile dementia in 1907 around the time that Alzheimer published his short paper summarizing his lecture. The two men had different interpretations of the disease, but due to Alzheimer's short life, 
they never had the opportunity to meet and discuss their ideas. In 1894, he married Cecilie Simonette Natalie Geisenheimer, with whom he had three children. Cecilie died in 1901. In August 1912, Alzheimer fell ill on the train on his way to the University of Breslau where he had been appointed professor of psychiatry in July 1912. Most probably he had a streptococcal infection and subsequent rheumatic fever leading to valvular heart disease, heart failure and kidney failure. He never recovered completely from this illness. He died of heart failure on December 19, 1915 at age 51, in Breslau, Silesia, present-day Wrocław, Poland. He was buried on December 23. 1915 next to his wife in the Hauptfredhof in Frankfurt am Main. In the early 1990s, critics began to question Alzheimer's findings and form their own hypotheses based on Alzheimer's notes and papers. Magixi and colleagues hypothesized that Auguste Tur had metachromatic leukodystrophy, a rare condition in which accumulations of fats affect the cells that produce myelin. Another hypothesis offered by Claire O'Brien was that Auguste Tur actually had a vascular dementing disease. Alzheimer was known for having a variety of medical interests including vascular diseases of the brain, early dementia, brain tumors, forensic psychiatry and epilepsy. Alzheimer was a leading specialist in histopathology in Europe. His colleagues knew him to be a dedicated professor and cigar smoker. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.